Ryan Nobles from CNN. I don't know if you're seeing that breaking news. Ryan, good morning. Yeah, Bill, I am seeing that, uh, that news. That is enormous news. Um, you know, obviously you had, well, yeah, I heard you talking about Giuliani uh, kind of hinting that this was going to happen. And then when President Trump said in his speech on Iran that uh, Mike Pompeo was on his way to North Korea, that certainly provided the foreshadowing. Uh, but now it's official that those hostages have been, are back in American custody. Uh, obviously a big win for President Trump. And while he's been pretty you know, roundly criticized for the decision to get out of the Iran deal, he continues to make gains in North Korea, uh, and he deserves credit for it, I think. And, and this is another example of the, of the progress that's being made there. All right. Uh, Ryan Nobles from CNN. Uh, Jeff. Good, quick question on the Iran deal. So my understanding is we're pulling out, but Iran says we're going to continue to do what we promised to do. So is I, I guess, is there some perspective on how much does this change what Iran actually sanctions, a- agreed to? Yeah. Right, we're going to impose sanctions, but I guess if the real fear is we don't want them to get a nuke, or they're still going to get a nuke, I guess this doesn't change much from their end. It just changes that we're penalizing them now, right? Well, I, you know, the big the big problem here is how does Europe respond to this? So what, what you know, the European leaders like Angela Merkel in Germany and Macron... Uh, in France, uh, Theresa May in, in Britain, what they're hoping is that they can continue their end of these negotiations in this deal with Iran. Remember, this isn't just an American-Iran deal. You know, there were a lot of European leaders involved in it, and, and they feel that the deal was working. They feel very differently than President Trump feels about it. In fact, both, you know, Macron and, and Merkel have both flew to the United States to try and implore the president to stay in. So, I think what you're seeing is these European leaders trying to salvage what's left of the deal. The answer to your question is, Jeff, these economic sanctions are so big, and there were all of these foreign companies that heavily invested in Iran that said, you know, we're going to take a a chance here now that these sanctions have been lifted. You know, Boeing is the best example. They were going to try and rebuild uh, the air uh, uh, commercial airline business in, in Iran. Now all these companies are like, we can't do business with you anymore. And at that point, when Iran maybe now says we're going to try and stick with this, but when their economy starts to collapse, is that when they retreat back uh, to going the nuclear weapons route? I think that's the big unknown here, and I think these European leaders are going to try and salvage it the best they can. Which, by the way, is exactly what's happening. Their their dollar has just uh, plummeted. Uh, The value of of their currency has just plummeted. So here's a a question. Uh, And I – everybody – and I know there are plenty out there that say getting out of the Iran deal is a, is a good thing. But most strategists, whether they like the deal or don't like the deal, and I saw it when Susan Rice and Condoleezza Rice came to Hamilton College, they argued, and it was unbelievable to watch this, Susan Rice and Condoleezza Rice getting into it, aggressively getting into it to the point where the moderator couldn't even uh, couldn't stop them. Condoleezza uh-huh. Rice totally against the deal, but said... It would be a huge mistake to get out of it. Um, is it possible that this is the first move in the president's art of the deal to get concessions from Iran for the United States to get back in a deal? Well, that is definitely the argument that a lot of uh, Donald Trump supporters are saying, that he is the master of negotiation. He's basically taking the same attack that he did with NAFTA and with the, the uh, Asian Trade Pacific deal. Um, that, you know, he's going to pull out and then he's going to try and come in and work a better deal. The difference, I think, with Iran is that his rhetoric has been so, so tough on them. And Israel just has no interest in negotiating with Iran in any way, shape, or form. And obviously the Trump administration is closely aligned with Bibi Netanyahu and Israel. It seems to be taking cues uh, from Israel's hard line on Iran. So while... The president always seems to be open to negotiation. The rhetoric with this, particularly the rhetoric as it relates from a national security perspective, doesn't seem to open the door to those kind of negotiations. Um, So I think, you know, you heard in the president's remarks yesterday, he kind of alluded to that, that he would he would like to make a better and stronger deal. I just wonder where the path to that deal is, because, you know, within the scope of this deal, there's already opportunity to kind of fine-tune the agreement and to make sure that both sides are living up to it. So if you scrap the whole deal, you've got to start from square one. Yeah. And it was so difficult to get the deal done to begin with. So maybe that's his plan, Bill. I just don't know. I mean, that's why so many people are skeptical as to whether or not it'll work. 
Um, it, it, it is breaking news. The U.S. detainees released from North Korea. This is just breaking right now. Um, here's something that uh, that uh, that they talked about the uh, the uh, Condoleezza Rice, who again I, I want to reiterate was absolutely against the deal. Um, and speaking to somebody and Susan Rice that was a part of the crafting of the deal, um, it was really interesting. But Condoleezza Rice said a lot of this has to do with really winning the the battle with Iran. That there are there's a younger population and a moderate population like never before in Iran since certainly since 1980, and mm-hmm. that that the thought of more sanctions, tougher sanctions, getting out of the deal. Is going to is going to actually hurt them, and everything right. that has been gained to try to to make Iran more of a moderate country will be lost because you'll lose this group. What What are your thoughts, and what are you hearing about that? Yeah, Bill, you have crystallized the most difficult argument in the diplomatic community about the way to deal with oppressive regime, and that is: Do you put a stranglehold on these? dictatorial uh, leaders with the goal of trying to get them to change their ways. But when you do that, those dictators still live lavish lifestyles, and it is the people under them that suffer. And not only that, those dictators blame that suffering on the United States and, and these other foreign powers as opposed to their own actions. And there are many in the international community that believe the tact that President Obama took with Cuba, for instance, is the better tact open up lines of communication, even though these regimes are going to benefit from it, with the goal of flooding these countries with the information of seeing what the world is like outside of these regimes, and then perhaps the next generation of leaders will then take the steps necessary uh, to reform their countries. The problem with that is that you still continue to fuel these dictators, and sometimes it works, sometimes it backfires. And obviously, you know, the John Kerry's of the world, the Susan Rice's of the world believe that opening up the channels of communication and economies to Iran would encourage these young people to say, you know what, I don't want to live in this kind of totalitarian regime anymore. I want to, I want to hear new ideas. Yeah, I want to have yeah. a new future. But it's a risk because at the end of the day, these dictators are still in charge. They still have these awful human rights abuses, and they don't necessarily change their ways. I mean, there's two ways to look at this. And I don't think either side knows for sure which way works best. The president just uh, 18 minutes ago tweeted, I am pleased to inform you that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is in the air and on his way back from North Korea uh, with three wonderful gentlemen that everyone is looking forward to meeting, to so forward to meeting. They seem to be in good health. Also, good meeting with Kim Jong-un, date and place set. Pompeo and his guests will be landing at Andrews Air Force Base at 2 a.m. this morning. I will be there to greet them. Very exciting. Um, and it is big news. That is big, big news. Wait, so did I, Bill, did read that? So he said that the date for the meeting with uh, President Trump and Kim Jong Un has been set. That's, that's what he's that's saying. What the president yep. said. Yep. Wow. Date. So that's also really significant news because we don't know. We had not known where that was going to take place. So that I assume we'll learn that later today. That's I believe so. Yeah. Also. Yep. Yeah, major, major news. So, yeah, a lot happening this morning. So uh, how do you um, – how do uh, – the, the one criticism that, uh, that Trump supporters have right now is, oh, the, uh, the people who are against Trump just can't – they don't know what to do. They, they can't handle this, that the, he's actually accomplishing things. Uh, respond yeah. to that if you could. Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually in West Virginia this morning. I, I was here for uh, the Senate primary that took place here last night. Uh, and the guy uh, that was running that was in big. the mold of Donald Trump, yeah, yeah, John Blankenship, ended up getting crushed. Um, and, you know, it's interesting when you're in a, in, a, in a state like West Virginia, which is, you know, heavily uh, in favor of, of President Trump. You know, there, uh, it, it, it's, it's true that, you know, on the ground here, people are not talking about the Russia investigation. You know, they're much more worried about feeding their families. They're yeah. worried about the price of gas. They're worried about education and health care. And... For many people, and especially these rural communities, they feel that, that President Trump is, is, is helping them. Now, whether or not that uh, is, is the actual case and whether that translates to tangible results, I guess, is up to the, the individual. But, yeah. you know, I, I think that there is a lot of this beltway chatter that isn't necessarily making its way into the consciousness of a lot of everyday Americans. So I think that's the opening that President Trump has. 
But the, his own, and we've talked about this before, Bill, his big problem is he's the one that continues to talk about the investigation. He's the one that, to a certain extent, keeps adding fuel to the fire by responding uh, to the charges against him. Right, if right. He, a lot of people, especially his, you know, his, the people that support him and, and, and want to see him succeed, feel like if he was talking a lot more about North Korea and even Iran, you know, you can, you know, there are obviously two ways to look at the Iran deal that perhaps he'd be in a, a much stronger position politically. Um, you know, I, I think that that's a calculus that that uh, it needs to be made, but I don't know if that's ever going to change the president's conduct in any way. Uh, interesting. I'm going to cut it short because you are breaking up in the antiquated cell service, uh, which is. Uh in West Virginia, uh, <laughs> third, third is, world yeah. cell service over there. Um, <laughs> we appreciate it. We'll talk again next week. Uh, but again, great to have you on as, as this news was just unfolding. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. Thanks. I've right, Ryan. The cell service. All right. All right. That's all right. Thanks. Uh, Ryan Nobles from CNN.